Welcome back. It's to Post Politics. Governor of River State Yesom Wike on Monday threw some jives at the current leadership of Nigerian Governors Forum, NGF, saying they are toothless bulldog. But in a swift response, the ruling APC has replied him, saying the NGF was destroyed by PDP. To tell us more on this pressure group is Dr. Ken Nweke and Osa. Director, who are both, uh, Dr. Dr. Nweke happens to be a lecturer, and we also have a journalist and a lawyer, that's um, Osa, director, joining us to put more light on this. Let me start with Dr. Ken. Okay, how do you describe what is going on? A lot of people have said that uh, the Nigerian Governors Forum has truly lost its grip in terms of uh, power? Um, uh, looking at it clearly, you find that um, um, when uh, Nigerian Governors Forum was uh, uh, first founded, though was not um, as strong as um, it became um, from 2009. So from 1999 to 2008, um, it was uh, merely existing uh, on paper, but not as strong as it became uh, from uh, 2009, uh, uh, when uh, 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 Kukola Saraki became the chairman of Nigerian Governors Forum. And so from then, you know, Nigerian Governors Forum was very, very formidable, you know, in terms of um, uh, being uh, um, very, uh, up, um, uh, very open and uh, very not confrontational, so to say. Uh, in terms of uh, dealing with uh, the federal government uh, in matters of national uh, importance and all that, especially affecting the states. And so there was that, you know, um, um, forum that uh, we knew to be one that actually uh, went for uh, uh, certain issues or the, uh, the, the voices of the Nigerian Governors Forum were clearly heard on uh, very national, uh, important national issues, you know, and then that was very, very remarkable at the time, very strong, you know, Nigerian government forum under uh, Bukola Saraki was, and then Rotimi uh, Chibuki Amirichi, the then governor of River State, when he became um, a Nigerian governor's forum, you know, chairman, he, he, the voice of NGF was also very, very, you know, heard, very loud and all that. Um, and a lot of you know, achievements, if you ask me, we are made in terms of um, checking the excesses of, you know, um, the, the federal government. You know that uh, naturally, uh, looking at uh, where we are today, in terms of our constitution, the the, the Nigerian typical Nigerian uh, executive arm is, you know, um, very powerful, you know, very overbearing, you know, in terms of uh, the, its uh, influence on the other arms of government and so or, or tiers of government and so looking at that the nigerian governance forum became a very formidable force uh, bringing about some level of check uh, you know on the uh, federal government in terms of its uh, overbearing influence on the other tiers of government and so a lot of uh, issues you know were raised with the federal government you know nigeria's federalism is something that um, 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 became very, very, um, uh, very, 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 very uh, important in, in national discourse, you know, because um, as you look at Nigerian federalism, you find that there are a lot of loopholes. And so the Governors Forum at the time, at various times before now, we are very, very, you know, formidable in um, ensuring that uh, those things that affected them, affected the states or other federating units you know, we are actually uh, discussed. You know, for instance, uh, um, um, issues of uh, even subsidy, fuel uh, removal, I mean, uh, fuel subsidy, you know, came, on, I mean, uh, on the front burner, you know, before the NGF at the time. And so, so many issues, you know, around them, issues of uh, sovereign wealth uh, uh, funds, you know, excess crude and all that. So those were some of the issues, you know, that came and that the Governors Forum you know, was very, Nigeria government was very okay. loud in 
you know, um, declaring his uh, uh, position on very strong okay, national. Okay, thank you, thank but, you, thank uh, you, Dr. Ken. Thank you for that background. Very, very important to this conversation. Let me go to the director. Osa, let, let, let's look at um, what is the play? Where is the place of the NGF? Even when parties say they have the progressive governors, PDP will say they have their own arm of the, uh, of the pressure group. Do they have any local standard? Because we understand that none of these parties recognizes this group as an entity. Yeah, well, uh, thank you for having me. Certainly, constitutionally and statutorily, the Nigerian Governors Forum has no defined role. But by virtue of Section 40, of the 1999 constitution as amended, they have a right to peaceful assembly and association. So as governors with common interest, they have the right to congregate in order to aggregate and conciliate and pursue issues of a mutual interest. But they don't have any constitutional recognition or social recognition as a body. They are rights derived from their individual rights and privileges as chief executive of their state as enshrined in section 176 sub 2 of the 1999 constitution as uh, amended so that gives them a kind of a uh, uh, legal body you know because they don't have any constitutional recognition but as i said earlier because they are guaranteed the right of peaceful assembly and association under the Constitution, it is not wrong for them to come together to say they want to pursue issues of common interest. And in a heterogeneous and plural society like us, you really need such associations if they are heavily formed with a common purpose, you know, to drive an agenda. It makes implementation of policies, I mean, policies and programs of a government easier because you can imagine that members of the Nigerian Governors Forum, by virtue of uh, the third schedule, uh, part uh, 1B5, are members of the Council of State. And they have that, the, the Council of State have an unrest responsibility to advise the president on a lot of issues like uh, issue of national award, even issue of the National Judicial Council, INEC, and so on and so forth. And also by virtue of uh, the third schedule, uh, part 1H18, they are also members of the National Economic Council. So they play a very, very important role. So if you are able to buy in members of the Governors Forum, when they come to the Economic Council, decisions are easier and policies are easier to drive and implement. However, like we know, the Nigerian factor usually play in. You see people pursuing hidden and secret and selfish uh, agenda. You see people not acting and taking decisions based on partisan interests, that's party lines, whether you are APC or you are PDP. So these are the issues that have kind of uh, derogated from the importance and relevance of the Nigerian uh, Governors Forum. But if you ask me, in the, the federating units of, uh, of, of, of the country, of the nation, would actually require such a body if they are cohesive, if they are purposeful and committed to the pursuit of agreed common goals and objectives. Okay, let's, 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 let's go into some specifics now. Let me stay with you before I go to uh, uh, Dr. Kane. Let me stay with you. Let's go into some specifics. As we speak, we, let's look at the political implication of what is going on. I will remind you again, you remember the days when, uh, uh, during the time of Obasanjo, and we had this governor's forum, and it appears that you have to be a former governor be, and you become the president. And then we have the likes of Yaradwa, we have the Jonathan, we have it going on like that until we had that break and we have Buhari. So we are looking at, is it really about the political gain? We have the, is it the neck now where these governors come to meet with the president? Why do you have to form the Nigerian Governors Forum? Yes, like I said, there is nothing wrong. They are constitutionally protected. 
to come together on that kind of a session to pursue issues of mutual interest. But just like you uh, highlighted, during Obama's and just time, you know, they were very influential to the extent that they had one of them uh, becoming uh, the president. I mean, they always have input into what the president decides. But however, that is determined by the body language and disposition of the president in power. We all know the body language and disposition of President Muhammad Buhari is not given to those kind of uh, uh, what I'll call uh, interactivity. You know, he has openly said that even his appointees should report to the chief of staff or the secretary of government, as the case may be, depending on the issue they are uh, seeking his attention. You know, so with, the, with that, you now discover that the governor's forum has become irrelevant because they are supposed to be interacting with the president who is not really cut out for such level of social and political interactivity. So that has really reduced the importance and relevance of the government. So I agree with you that to a large extent, it's not because of the partisan differences of uh, political parties okay. or PDP or AP. It has to do with the purpose, with the focus, with the ideology, ideological commitment of the president who is in power. This current president has not shown interest in promoting and encouraging such uh, interactivity. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I understand that we have a few more minutes to round off this. Let me go back to Dr. Ken. Dr. Ken, speaking specifically to what gave birth to this conversation, do you share the, the, the opinion of, the, uh, of Governor Wiki that the Governor's Forum has lost its bite? I'm sure part of the reason might be what is happening in APC, where it appears the, the, the national chairman is having his way onto what happened in court. Of course, uh, uh, clearly, they're, they're from the background given here, you know, from the other speaker, you, you clearly understand that the uh, Nigerian Governors Forum has lost um, um, its uh, relevance um, as, you know, in comparative terms. Even when Yari was there, it was not as uh, also good as it was during the uh, uh, time of uh, Bukola Saraki and Rotimi Chibiki Amechi, you know. And so the, the relevance of... Um, uh, Nigerian Governors Forum has whittled down, you know, uh, owing to some of the uh, uh, factors that um, the other speaker had uh, uh, said, you know, concerning the disposition of the president of Nigeria. And so he is one person who has not uh, been favorably disposed to, you know, the, uh, the kind of uh, interaction that should bring about, uh, you know, improvement in the, in, in the lives of Nigerians. And so for him, is a choice of uh, working uh, very well with the Nigerian Governors Forum. But yet another thing, probably for political reasons and all that, that those who are now heading Nigerian Governors Forum, remember uh, currently um, the uh, uh, FIME, you know, was a member of the Federal Executive Council who was given another opportunity for a second term and all that. And, do, and then what do you expect, you know, uh, uh, Nigerian Governors Forum to, you know, achieve? But... What I want to say clearly is not that Nigerian Governors Forum should be confrontational. No. You know, Nigerian Governors Forum should be, you know, a bridge, you know, builder between the federal government, the state, and the people, ordinarily. Not that Nigerian Governors Forum should be confrontational. But what uh, my governor here had really said is that, look, Nigerian Governors Forum, as powerful as it was before, we are able, you know, to follow bomber to bomber with the federal government and that uh, brought about a number of achievements that, uh, you know, the past or successive governments, you know, uh, did achieve in the past. And so what has happened today, because issues of good governance and all that, you know, revolve around, you know, certain checks on the part of um, the uh, uh, federal government and on the part of the federal government, you know, to be able to, you know, um, align properly to bring about good governance. And so when that is not lacking in... A, a, a powerful group and you know a, a pressure group as, as 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 strong as it should be the Nigerian Governors Forum. So if like uh, the other speaker has said, they are members of uh, uh, National Economic Council and all that, then the, the Nigerian Governors Forum. In fact, when you also look at it, uh, in the past some of the governors you know we are very very influential because they 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 you know influence the members of the National Assembly you know from their states and all that, and so they also influence them 
in whatever they do in the National Assembly. But today, you know, <laughs> the reverse is the case. Okay. And so it, it appears that people, you know, are now sleeping on their, you know, this thing. It's not also about the president's disposition, because you may not like confrontation or what, but it's about who is also leading and then who is also following the leadership of Nigerian Governors Forum to bring about, you know, the much needed um, um, okay. synergy between Thank the states so and the prior government. Dr. Not Ken, our time is fast spent. Uh, we have a news bulletin coming up soon. And I want to say thank you to you. That's Dr. Ken Nweke. He's a senior lecturer from, I mean, in political science at the Ignatius Ajuru University in River State. Thank you for your time. Trust me, this conversation continues on all our social media platforms. Thank you once again. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm an associate professor of political science. Wow. Very, very important. Now I understand. <laughs> and uh, Dr. I mean, I almost call you doctor. You're probably an associate prof too, Mr. Osa, director, for your insight. Those short, but they were quite very helpful to this conversation. Thank you for your time. We hope to be with you sometime very soon to be part of this conversation. And to thank our viewers, you, thank you for staying with us. We'll go on a short break, and when we come back, I'll be giving you my take. Please don't go anywhere. This is my take. While it appears that our politicians are yet to learn from the mistakes of the past, it is incumbent on us, the voters, not to follow suit. Have we voted in the past without looking at the pedigree of the candidates and the programs of the party? It is time to change the narrative. Let's vote for men and women who can deliver the dividends of democracy. And that is my take. Let's do this again tomorrow, same time, on the same station. I am Coyote Ladeinde, saying bye for now. <laughs>